you're always going to need to be doing some kind of marketing, some way, shape, or form. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to make this an interactive panel. We'd love your questions. So if you have questions, by all means, just uh, raise your hand and let us know what those questions are. And we're going to uh, all introduce ourselves. So again, I'm Greg Gregory, the founder of Doctor Talks. And Doctor Talks is a uh, media platform for doctors to get their patient education out to our 600,000 patient ecosystem. So we're gonna talk uh, about how, how we do that, how we help companies like you get in front of doctors or patients, and then I am going to let the rest of our panel introduce ourselves. So let's start with Maureen. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen Brown, CEO and co-founder of Rosie Baby, and we have the first OTC health insemination kit to help people inseminate at home. Um, I actually came to start that company after our own struggle to conceive, and we ended up conceiving our son, who is the first one to baby. We are primarily direct consumer now, but we will, will be expanding into healthcare channels in the coming year. And we have expanded into retail recently, and so most ago, my experience has been in direct to consumer marketing, and happy to share some of our experiences now. Uh, my name is Shomir Das, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Sleepies. We are based in Zurich, Switzerland. We are a young company founded as spin up from ETH Zurich. What we have done is we have built a small box that you put next to your bed while you sleep. And we help patients who are suffering from chronic respiratory disease to manage their chronic conditions. The first disease state that we started to tackle was sleep apnea. As you all probably know that if you have to get diagnosed for sleep apnea, you'll have to put tons of cables on your body and sleep in an unknown place. We are bringing a paradigm shift in the sleep apnea diagnostic ecosystem where you put the small box next to your bed and go to sleep and we will be able to screen you for sleep apnea. And we also help you manage the chronic condition as you continue the therapeutic pathway. We started out uh, with reaching out to doctors uh, for our early commercialization stage, okay? However, soon we realized that the pain pointer, the main pain pointer is being faced by the patients themselves. They are the one who has to go through those uh, wires, okay, those, uh, te let's say, uh, traumatic experiences. And we changed our focus and we focused on patients directly and we used the direct-to-patient approach to create awareness around this new methodology to get screened directly at home. And within one year of launch in Switzerland, we have screened around 4,000 people already. Wow, Thanks. amazing. Thank you. Let's go to Jonathan. Jonathan Barrett, CEO and founder of NextSense. We spun out of Google initially with a reading the brain platform through a pair of earbuds. So we wanted to galvanize pharmaceutical research and realize there's no Holter monitor for the brain. And lots of neurological trials are fraught with uh, challenges with placebo effect or getting the right targeted um, uh, patients, and so we have a B2B side that I'll talk a little bit about how we reach the pharmaceutical uh, industry, but also we have a stimulation side where we have our own therapeutic, and so what I'm wearing around my neck is also a pair of earbuds, but this stimulates the vagus nerve, and we have breakthrough designation for postpartum depression, and that'll be our first indication. Maybe as you know, vagus nerve stimulation has been effective for depression, epilepsy, and other conditions, but it's mostly been invasive with uh, companies like Leva Nova paving the way, um, but again, ours is through a pair of earbuds and is non-invasive. And so eventually, uh, once we have our breakthrough and, and approval, we'll be marketing to doctors and, and trying to get the word out there too. Fantastic, Juan. Good morning, I'm Juan Jimenez, co-founder and CEO of AcuCardia. In AcuCardia, we have built a device agnostic ECG interpretation platform for clinical and consumer devices perform their analysis. Uh, we are a six-stage com six company and we have filed our first 510K a few months ago. And I'm gonna be able to, to share my, my experience about pre-FDA marketing. Great, well, why don't we start with you? So again, e each one of these companies are at different stages of who they would market to. And so let's start with one, so pre-FDA approval marketing. So who are you marketing to? Who's your target audience and how are you doing it? Um, given that we are pre-FDA, we have to be very cautious how we how we market them in, via social media or massive uh, media. So our focus has been on targeting key opinion leaders in academia, medical centers, and the med device industry. Given that our initial plans are to go uh, direct, like B2B, rather than direct to consumer, we use forums like this one to meet uh, key potential partners 
which initially are device makers, remote patient monitoring companies, and telehealth service providers. And then when you meet those key opinion leaders, how do you work with them to effectively get the word out about your product? Um, what we do is show the, show the performance of our product. We let them try it and test it and see how we can perform vis-a-vis -vis what they're used to. So I think the best marketing tool for any pre-revenue, pre-FDA clearance company is to show performance on the product and validation. You can say as many things as you want, but if you don't have data to support your claims, it will be very difficult to influence key opinion leaders. And then what do you, how do you get those key opinion leaders then to spread the word? How do you, how do you follow up with them to get them to actually share your, not, the, the information about your company? Sure. Once you, you share your, the, your product, your performance, and how it can solve the pain points that these key opinion leaders are having, for example, the ECG interpretation space for a ca cardiologist waiting two or three or even week, two or three days or even weeks to get their data and see that they can have an alternative in a matter of minutes rather than days. So it's, it markets by itself. So I think it's uh, showing your product and be candid what it can do and cannot do, as well as its performance is the best way to, to motivate a key opinion leader to, to use the product, do research, and publicate. Fantastic. Um, well, let's stay on that uh, key opinion leader. So how are, uh, Jonathan, how are you using key opinion leaders or perhaps influencers? Uh, we're, so we started in the epilepsy space as we were reading the brain waves, and so we uh, reached out to um, uh, folks like Jackie French from Epilepsy Foundation and the advocacy groups and showed them the data that we had collected. Of course, we targeted certain conferences, so we've done poster sessions at uh, AES the last couple years. And then, as, as you mentioned, you know, getting peer-reviewed journal articles you know, published. And so uh, for that side, that's kind of been our approach. Now, because the depression is new for us, we're actually seeking those out, uh, key opinion leaders in depression and postpartum depression in particular. Can I get a show of hands of who would be looking for key opinion leaders to help you market and sell your products? Raise your hand if you're looking for that. All right, fantastic. Okay, this is great. Um, why don't you share with us how you're uh, using working with key opinion leaders and influencers? Yeah, in the medical device space, I think key opinion leaders play a very, very critical role. Okay, and I agree with what what was just said about uh, showing performance and and uh, about your product. And more importantly, you know, focusing on the problem that you're solving. Okay, not all key opinion leaders will resonate with with the problem. Okay, in our case, we were solving the problem of a patient. We were not necessarily increasing the revenue for the doctors. Okay, no one is going to use their sleep lab. But there are key opinion leaders who empathize with the patients, who drive the change. Okay, you need to identify the right key opinion leader. You need to resonate with them. Okay, and once they see that, okay they will be your brand ambassador. I, I totally agree with that. I find, I find if you can find a key opinion leader who is passionate about your service, that is, in my opinion, far more powerful than if a, a passionate person with a much smaller following is better than a non-passionate person with a much larger following every time. It, it took us some time, but we were able to get to them, okay? And once yeah. we got them and we knew it, now they sit in our current medical advisory board, okay? They really understand our thesis, okay? They, they resonate with us, and we, we have been doing reasonably well in that sector. Fantastic, and Maureen. Sure, so um, second very much what you're, you were just saying, but ultimately I'll take kind of another approach to add on here. So for us, we were working in a very stigmatized space. A lot of people don't talk about struggles to conceive. And that's fertility. And that's fertility, but more importantly, like the actual insemination, right? Intercourse, if you're struggling to have um, intercourse, either through painful intercourse or a lot of men have erectile issues now that sometimes are situational, dependent on the stress of timed intercourse. And so these are, these are things that people are just not talking about really. Um, so for us, what we really found to be critical for our growth and our success, we now have sold 100,000 kits, was empowering our community to feel safe and comfortable sharing their stories. And so we, you know, it's, a, it's valuable and important to have the key opinion leaders, and it's also valuable and important to empower the people who are utilizing your, your product. Um, be it, you know, obviously a patient who um, maybe you have access to or you don't have access to, but informing them in such a way where they have language to speak knowledgeably about your product 
and also feel confident in the use of the product. So we did that by working very closely with our first you know, early adopters and making sure that we were answering all their questions and getting to, to understand what the immediate questions people had so we could build language around that, frequently asked questions, and then just continuing down that path to provide information so that everyone who came across our product had the ability to understand it and speak to it as a user. And then um, we continue to empower them through social media. And now we have people who feel very comfortable saying, you know, hey, we're going to mosey this weekend. Because it's become a thing where people feel confident enough to say, you know, we're, we're going to try to inseminate this weekend. So, you know, I think that, that, and that's happened over a matter of years for us. It didn't happen overnight. This was something that we just continued to work very closely with and be in contact with, personally as the founder, with our users, our end users. And that actually has really helped <laughs> with the key opinion leaders because mm. those folks at first didn't know what to make of us. And they weren't sure if this was a thing and they weren't, you know, well, why would people do that when they can do IVF or why would they do that when they can do IUI? And, and some people absolutely need those procedures, but a large number of people were overlooked and they didn't realize how many people weren't sharing their problems. And so now they see, oh, they're, they're, they're not, doctors are not typically asking about your sex life when you're trying to conceive. So now they have these patients coming in and saying, well, we had success with Mozi. So this has changed our wow. momentum and that we now have inbound from physicians. Wow. So it, it's something where I say, don't overlook you know, direct contact with your end users, the patients, the consumers, because they ultimately are your voice. And the more you can give them, um, empower them, with understanding of your product, so they feel very confident and can speak to it, I think that will only lead to further success. I think in this digital age, a lot of people forget about word of mouth marketing, but that is still by far one of the most powerful forms of marketing out there. And also, a lot of us cannot use customer testimonials, we're, we're just barred from it, but there's something different that the customers are free to share their own success stories, whether that's B2B, B2C, they can do that all day long. And interestingly, word of mouth marketing, if you leverage it properly, can be done digitally. Uh, and you can, a, a lot of these customers, especially if they have their own big following, perhaps their, their own influencers, they are allowed to share their experience on social media or with, uh, you know, whether it's peer to peer. And that we found that to be really effective. And um, particularly for us at Doctor Talks, when we're looking, we want to try and get, um, when we put on a heart disease summit, we want to try to find a, a premier cardiologist and we want them to bring in their own, their other cardiologist friends. And that happens through word of mouth marketing, yet it's done online. So it, it, it <clears throat> becomes much more powerful. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, why don't we talk a little bit about what are some of your most successful marketing activities? And actually, why don't we Start with Juan. So out of all the marketing activities that you've done, what's the most successful one you can think of? Uh, for us, it's been uh, participating in events like this one. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, selected every year, at the beginning of the year, we select the, the events we're going to participate throughout the year. And we, <clears throat> we choose events that we could meet our potential target customers or key opinion leaders, such as device makers, um, remote patient monitoring companies, as well as uh, members of the academia. So events like this one and, um, and events like more scientific oriented has been helpful for us as we create more clinical validation and spread the word out. Awesome. Uh, Brad, I'm gonna give you one plus one. I'm gonna give you a bonus Please. if that's okay. Absolutely. So I, I think what set the stage is early on we did hire a PR firm. I, when I think about marketing, I think of PR, branding, messaging, and lead gen. And so I think early days um, would be an encouragement. They were actually the firm that uh, launched Siri and one of our advisors you know, introduced us. They help us with a hello world story is how they called it and got in touch with different journalists. And so Stephen Levy actually started taking interest from Wired. He followed us. We made him some earbuds. He took a nap. I showed him his brain waves. And he really Wrote a fantastic piece for us. Amazing. Uh, so that was that was fortunate, um, but you know we had to do some work. Well, it was more. Happened. Yeah, it was more than fortunate. Yeah. You you made that happen. To, right. Why don't you talk specifics? Yeah. So um, I, I think that 
you know, you, if, unless you have those relationships with journalists, you do need somebody. And yes. so that's where, mm -hmm. you know, if, if people are looking for a good firm, I, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about JDI. But then they told me, he said, JB, you know, Stephen's going to write whatever he's going to write. And mm -hmm. so we'll make the introduction, but it's up for you to build trust with him. And so I was transparent. I, sh you know, I wasn't just selling him. You yeah. know, I was letting him be a part of it. And if mm -hmm. something wasn't going well, I gave him exposure to my team. Mm -hmm. So I think that authenticity and building trust was good. And so that sort of led to what um, our, our most successful campaign is now. Remember, for our uh, reading the brain side, we market to pharma companies. And a Wired article is, is nice, and it shows that you're maybe a real company that has promise. Right. But we had to uh, find a way to scalably reach out. And so I ran AdWords Teams, which is basically digital marketing for Google mm -hmm. in the Americas um, about seven, eight years ago. And so I hired my top guy from that to come and really build a digital marketing campaign. And so every week we're sending out about 2,000 emails. Mm -hmm. um, it has my name attached. They're kind of, you know, you might think that they're a little uh, cheeky, but like you have to get attention. And so it's a drip marketing campaign. We use a, a company called the Veth Group to sort of run that for us. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised what um, a $50 Morton's you know, steak gift card or a DoorDash card will do. And we'll say, I just want seven minutes of your time. And you know, we, we get hundreds of opens, and then at least about one to two qualified meetings a week. And, and qualified meetings we, with pharma? With pharma, yeah. Amazing. And these are, so we, you have to know who you're targeting. Yep. So we know that anybody with digital innovation <clears throat> or uh, digital lead in a pharma company is a good target for us. So you know, we populated the drip marketing campaign with that. You know, we send them emails every two or three weeks. And, and then you know, once, we, once we get them, we know, to your point, the data speaks for itself. The waveforms are beautiful that we collect. And so they um, are, are surprised they hadn't heard of us. right? And so, so I do think that for B2B, digital marketing and having some sort of scaled approach can be very effective. And just by show of hands, how many here are B2B type marketing? Who, who needs to reach? OK, I see a few in the back. OK, great. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, so, what are some of your most uh, your most successful campaigns activities? Yeah, um, <clears throat> for us, uh, working with a PR company worked very well. Okay, I can totally resonate with that. When we decided to go direct to to, to patient, uh, we also partnered with a PR company in, in Switzerland. Okay, and they basically you know explained us you know how this entire space worked. Okay? It and, was and how many how many patients do you have at this point? For four thousand. Four thousand. Okay, great. So we started with, with them, okay, and, and they, they kind of you know explained us you know how this entire space works, okay, um, that they are you know that, that was the, actually the whole hello world uh, that you have here. When when the first, I still remember the first time I was talking to the PR person, okay, and he was like, okay, just tell me your story, and why did you do it, okay, and and I was telling him with with my entire passion that you know why the hell did we build it. And he was just looking at me, and I think I, I continued talking for 30 days. And at the end, he says that you have got an amazing story. Okay, yeah. this is what you're going to tell. Mm. And and then we are building, and as an entrepreneurs, we are, we are solving a problem. We, we we understand the depth of the problem. And as we tried to explain that, okay, um, and this pure company actually helped us shape that particular messaging. Okay, how we are actually helping them. Okay. And then we basically you know, went out there and he connected us with a lot of uh, very influenced journalists, okay, who again tried our product, our service, and then they wrote a very nice piece, okay, which really put us in a, in a, in a very good point that we were struggling for the next three months to service our customers. And too many customers. That, that, that was like a uh, high intensity <laughs> load that we had, okay, and we had to be prepared. But at the same time, I, I resonate with what you said that. These early days, okay, we, we were not expecting so many of them, okay, and then when they come, and if the experience is not good, you're gonna get negative publicity, okay. So that also is something you have to be very, very careful of. We did manage to to fulfill those orders, okay. Had it been uh, slightly more, I think we would have uh, basically, uh, yeah, given a very bad uh, image of, of the company with not being able to fulfill our delivery times where, you know, kind of, uh, very very long, um, but that was that was very nice. Uh, let's say uh, 
outcome of the PR campaign that we had, but slowly we followed on towards the customer stories, okay? As of today, what really you know, drives Sleepy is, is customer stories. We have now created forums where customers can now talk about them, okay? They can tell their story, how they have used this particular product and services, and how that's basically changing their life. And that we have seen has been consistently driving a lot of people towards sleepies. And whenever right. we fulfill an order, what we also keep in mind is uh, we do tell them to take the report to the doctor. Yeah. Okay. So we encourage them, go and talk to the doctor with this report, okay, and, and discuss your case. And that also gives them more and more trust that they can take to their own doctor, okay, discuss that. And we receive a phone call from the doctor is like, I like what you guys do, okay? Can I use your service for all of my patients? And yeah. boom, this is how we are building our, you know, let's say, doctor's funnel, which was non-existent before. And when we tried to sell them at the beginning, no one was even talking to us, like, what the hell? Uh, but now we are able to, you know, focus on the patient, okay? Where we are solving a critical problem for the patients, and through them are building our pipeline of doctors who are now then becoming a lighthouse to more and more patients. Okay. In this case, we are also able to manage the digital ad spend that we are having and are building a more reliable, uh, uh, sustainable growth for us. I, that's a great demonstration of word of mouth marketing done digitally by creating a forum. And how do you, just very quickly, how do you deal with privacy issues around that forum? So we do not moderate the forums. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, again, you know, goes for the patients who are willing to come forward and talk. Not all are willing to do that, right. okay? Some are willing to do that because they resonate with the problem strongly, okay? So much so that we get wine bottles shipped to our wow. uh, offices with a note of thanks. That's a good okay. sign. And a Swiss chocolate. <laughs> and Maureen, most successful marketing campaigns? Yeah, so um, I'll talk about our most successful, and also I want to speak to PR, because yeah. we also thought, oh, PR, we have a great story. Everybody's going to want to write about us, and we got a PR person in the beginning, and... No, like we got no hits, we got nothing. But ultimately, um, what I found was that exercise was a really good exercise for us because they do work with you on key messaging. We were able to kind of hone in on what our story was and get it in kind of these little blurbs and pitches. And um, for us, that was a helpful exercise, even though really honestly, in the very beginning, it like did not result in much. So I just kind of a word of caution that, you know, I think there's a high expectation sometimes for PR, but honestly, there's other routes for earned media and you can, you can find other pathways. But um, for us, the most successful was honestly um, wanting to celebrate success with our, our families, the people who had had success and conceived with our kit. So we start, you know, out of instinct, just so excited from our, our, first um, res our reported pregnancies, we just wanted to send them a baby gift. <laughs> and we didn't have anything at the time, so we created a onesie. And so we started sending onesies out, and then eventually people started you know, taking pictures of their babies and putting it on social media and hashtagging and all of that. And so now we have a whole system worked out for people to um, order their onesies, and um, it's been the, the best you know, word of mouth campaign for us because it really, where we come from is we want to celebrate the love that it took to make this baby. And obviously a lot of people who are using our product have experienced some emotional challenges as well to creating their family. And we want to make sure that they are feeling this, you know, this feeling of love when it comes to um, their creation story of their family. And one way to do that is to celebrate it with joy and love. And so that we have onesies that say made with love. And that was, you know, a way for us to just empower them and celebrate them. And many baby, we have many, many baby photos now, which is great for user generated content that you can oh. then recycle into, you know, other places. <clears throat> but of course, with their position, p permission. Um, so that's something where, you know, it kind of created this cycle for us and, and they're really sweet baby pictures, which who doesn't want to <laughs> see, you know, which we love. Well, another great, um, uh, example of, uh, how to get your customers to generate more customers for you, word of mouth marketing online. And again, because so many of us can't use customer testimonials 
or we can't, you, we can't share the customer success stories, but the customers certainly can. And if you can empower them, encourage them to share, again, even if it's peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, B2B, you can get them to share their own uh, success stories. Um, for us at Doctor Talks, um, I had been in uh, online marketing in the uh, healthcare space for almost 15 years. And I've, I feel like I tried every different type of healthcare marketing, B2B, B2C. And the one type of marketing that worked best for us and our physician and uh, clinics was doing an online summit. So we would produce a, for a cancer clinic or a cancer doctor that would be a customer of ours, we would produce an online cancer summit where one doctor cardiologist would uh, pre-record 40 interviews with 40 other physicians. And then all, and that would take about 10 months to produce and pre-record. And then all of the doctors at the same time would send an email invitation to their full patient list for the people to register for the summit for free. The summits are free to register and free to attend for a limited time. And that would result on the small side, 25,000 patients would register for a summit. The large ones, 120,000 would register for a summit. And uh, we found that we could do this in pretty much any condition, whether it was Alzheimer's, autoimmune, um, any, any major health condition, this format would work. And um, that also really uh, generated a, a tremendous amount of peer-to-peer -peer marketing because the doctors would all bring their friends to come and speak on the summits. Um, so it was a great viral way to um, do marketing that we didn't have to buy any ads. We didn't have to do a lot of the typical online marketing things that you would think. And now we have a 600,000 patient email list. So we found that it, it works pretty well. In our last uh, two minutes, we're going to go down really quickly and let us know what is your greatest challenge you think you're facing. So probably 30 seconds apiece. Let's start with Juan. I think the greatest challenge is um, for, for a company of our size is overcoming this balance between what you can say and cannot say as a pre-FDA clear product. I believe that reaching out the broader audience of customers, um, potential investors as a seed stage pre-clearance is, um, is the biggest challenge. So that's why our initial focus was on regulatory. Re product and regulatory and validation and um, hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll be able to be more open out there once uh, the FDA provides the clearance we're looking for. Wonderful. 30 seconds, Jonathan. I, I think, um, you know, honestly, if I had known about Dr. Talks, I, I might have taken a slightly different approach because <laughs> it was daunting. How do I get to 18,000 neurologists? Yeah. And so that's why we chose pharma because I didn't know how I was going right. to get to those folks. Mm -hmm. But now for postpartum depression, I don't have a choice. Um, right. you know, so I'm going to have to find a way to get to those folks. Awesome. Wonderful. Now for us, it has been a language that has been a significant barrier because you'll have to create the content. So in, in Europe, there are different countries, different languages. Switzerland itself has four languages, okay? And we want the story to be authentic, and it can only be authentic when it is coming from the native language. Native language yeah, okay. wow. Now, when we have to scale to different languages and reproduce that, it's uh, that that's a challenge for us. Wow. I think this is something we can tackle, but... Uh, this is our greatest challenge at the moment. Thank you. Rosie Bailey. So ours is awareness. We're creating a space. We're the first to create the space for home insemination in, in the United States. People still just don't even know that's a, that's a thing or an option. And so for us, that's still our greatest challenge. And uh, for Doctor Talks, we're always looking for doctors with large email lists. And there's, there's a limited number of those, although we've been pretty successful finding those. That's always our biggest challenge. So. Um, for all of you out there, remember there's all different, you're at all different stages of marketing and hopefully you have gotten some great information. We had this incredible panel here. Thank you all very much for your insights and your time. Hopefully you benefited from it and we're out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.